Let's sail up and ride to Tahiti, or whatever we find on the way. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're reminiscing on the top 10 Red Dead Redemption 2 story moments. Now that the PC version has been out for a while now, it seems like a good time to talk about the biggest moments of Rockstar's grandiose open world title. For this list, we're only focusing on events that happened during the main missions, so no side quests like the revelation of Jeremiah Thompson. Pissed on my legacy. Oh man, some jobs ain't for saving. Be advised that there are major spoilers ahead, so if you haven't played the game yet, well, what the hell are you doing here? Uh, where the hell am I? Number 10. Drinking with Lenny. They got Micah and the sheriffs in Strawberry. And there's talk of hanging them. Here's open. Arthur, what? Let's start off with something a little bit more lighthearted, especially for what's in store later on the list. So basically, Lenny almost got lynched in Strawberry after getting caught with the murderous Micah, who was arrested and now awaiting execution. So, what's the best way to get someone's mind off a near death experience? A night out drinking, of course. Oh. The whole sequence is a riot, with the lead up to bar fights turning into dancing lines, Arthur losing Lenny a few times, even starting to think that everyone in the bar is Lenny once he's had too much to drink. Been looking all over for you, Lenny. Do I look like a Lenny to you? Of course, it wouldn't be a wild night out without waking up in jail the next morning. Now, what was the problem again? At least you took your mind off goddamn Mike. Well, that's certainly true. Yeah, that can wait. Number nine, rescuing Jack Marston. Excuse me. I said, why did you take his son? In the lead up to the game's fourth chapter, Lil Jack Marston is kidnapped. Eventually, the trail to his whereabouts leads Dutch's gang to Angelo Bronte, a crime lord who owns a business the Vandalin gang ruined. More on that later. After John and Arthur run a quick errand for him in dispatching grave robbers, Jack is returned to them, much to the celebration of the rest of the camp. I got my son back! Jack! 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 How are you, boy? I'm fine, thanks. What follows is perhaps one of the best family bonding moments throughout the whole game, as everyone gathers around the campfire while Javier plays and sings Celito Lindo. <laughs> Although if you stay around long enough, you'll also get early indications that things aren't sitting well between Dutch and Molly which will have repercussions later. What is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? I have the feeling you're about to tell me. You have ruined my life. Number eight, the Saint Denis bank heist. Let's get out of this godforsaken place and go rob ourselves a bank. <laughs> Here we have the ultimate turning point for Dutch's character and the very moment that shows how vulnerable the entire gang is. Earlier, after being set up by Angelo Bronte, Dutch is determined to get the bank robbing job done, so that he and the rest of the gang can retire to Tahiti. But as soon as the gang is within the bank vault, things start to go terribly wrong. The Pinkertons have the bank surrounded, Hosea and Lenny are both killed, and John is arrested. Thus, Dutch proposes a crazy plan to sneak onto a boat in the harbour to make their escape completely unaware of where that boat is going. Well, let's just say that was a bad idea. I ain't no sailor, but uh, <clears throat> that cloud looked like good news to you. Number seven, Sadie's Vengeance. I was a married woman. You know what they did to me and to my husband. Out of all the character arcs within Red Dead 2, Sadie is the one who goes through the most development. At the start of the game, we first meet her after her husband was murdered in front of her by the O'Driscoll gang. They came three days ago, and my husband, they... Okay, miss, you are safe now. However, it's not until chapter six where she finally gets her revenge, and this comes in two main parts. First, she, Dutch, and Arthur foil Colm O'Driscoll's execution escape plan, forcing his men to watch him hang. After which, Sadie finishes off the rest. Now you know how it feels to watch somebody you love die. 
You ruined my life! Later, she and Arthur head to where the last of the gang is held up, where she tracks down and kills the man who killed her husband. Thus, she finally gets the opportunity to grieve for her lost love. And good lord does actress Alex McKinna really drive this performance home. I miss him every day, every moment. Oh, they turn me into a monster, Arthur. But my memories of him, they still pure. Number six, John Marston is back. You boys been coming up to Pronghorn. I thought I'd come down here. In the game's epilogue, John is finally attempting to settle down in life with Abigail and Jack by taking up the name Jim Milton and working as a ranch hand. Thank you, Mr. Milton. My pleasure. And you, mister? Fine. He just got my head. Things all seem well and good for him, albeit that the frustration of some players, given how attached they have grown to John in the first game, and have him play a supporting character throughout Arthur's journey. However, when the ranch is attacked by a local gang and the cows are stolen, John is forced to once again become the man we all grew to love from Red Dead Redemption 1. Complete with callbacks to the first game's box art. And she dip, get the stink of you off of her. Welcome back, old friend. Number five, Dutch abandons Arthur. What do you think, Charles? You know I told your father I will not fight over some horses. But I made no such promise. Come along. Chapter 6's story revolves around Dutch trying to start a war between Native Americans and the US government. On the surface, it seems like he's doing this for a noble but insane cause, trying to return the land to the indigenous people. They've taken everything from these people. Wouldn't you want to fight back? You've handed them a death sentence. In reality, he was merely using the tribesmen to get into Cornwall's factory and steal the state bonds for himself. While the mission is action-packed and filled with some standout set pieces, it's what happens to Arthur in their escape that finally showed Dutch's true colors. Uh, I need help. Uh, I need help. Yet what really aggravates this portrayal is that Dutch outright lies in front of the rest of the gang, and Arthur, in his weakened state, is left with no choice but to let this slide. For now. You. You ran away. Oh, I did no such thing. Don't be a fool. They could be back here any minute. We did it, gentlemen. Oh, we got some money. Number four, Arthur's diagnosis. Now to be fair, we knew Arthur Morgan wasn't going to make it to the end of the game since he doesn't appear in Red Dead Redemption 1. But rather than have his demise come from bullets like many of his fallen comrades, Rockstar instead made sure he, and thus the player, was fully aware of his fate. Perhaps what makes this scene so shocking is that it comes right out of nowhere. It doesn't take place during a mission and yet his condition has a lasting effect on the rest of the game. You got tuberculosis. I'm really sorry for you, son. It's a hell of a thing. At this point, Arthur will see a vision of an animal that's reflective of his past behavior up until that point, an existential metaphor of what he is upon this world. Number three, riding with rain's fall. <coughs> You don't sound very well. I'm not. I'm, I think I'm dying. And I hope you find peace. Following up from the last entry, Arthur's condition has worsened to the point where he's now visibly sick to others around him. Thus, he is invited by the native chief, Rain's Fall, on a ride up the mountainside to gather herbs to ease his suffering. Mix these together. It tastes awful, but it'll help to keep your strength up. The ride is quite a reprieve from the bombastic missions that have preceded this one, allowing the game to appreciate the beauty of the world Rockstar has created, while also allowing Arthur to reflect on what he has done, and what will happen to him after he has left this world. I don't know how long I got, but 
Some of them, they still got a chance to have a life. I just think it, if I could give them that, then maybe this ain't all for nothing. I think there is much you can still do, Mr. Morgan. Of course, it's back to the same old Rockstar gameplay soon after, but it was refreshing to have this moment of peace. Take those herbs I gave you, please. And most of all, I hope you can find peace within yourself. Number two, Assault on Braithwaite Manor. Okay, get your heads right. Nobody makes a move until I say so. If there was a mission that truly showed off Rockstar's cinematic vision for Red Dead Redemption 2, it's best displayed during this sequence. The mission that starts off in the search for young Jack Marston may sound like your regular go-to shootout, but it's the cinematography that's the star of this show. There they are. Who steals a goddamn boy? Starting out with a Magnificent Seven-esque lineup in walking up to the manor, to the impressive interior, all leading up to the finale of the manor being burned to the ground, all while the only surviving member of the Braithwaite family, Catherine, is forced to look upon the ruins of her family's legacy. I told you she was crazy. <laughs> Before we get to our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. We should be long gone by now. They got something of mine I ain't leaving without. Look, okay. it is a miracle. It is a goddamn miracle. Yeah. Have, have something to drink. Have a drink. Somebody yeah. give him a goddamn drink! Oh. My God. Yes. Heavenly indeed. Quite remarkable, isn't it? Well, we worked so hard to build a little house together. In the snow, or the rain, or the ice cold wind, whenever. He shot me. <laughs> you shot me pretty good. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Arthur's final choice. It all makes sense now. No, it damn well doesn't. The gang now has enough money to retire easily, but the revelation that Micah has been spying on the gang for the Pinkertons, and the return of John, who reveals that Dutch abandoned him, fractures the gang. Now! <coughs> who amongst you <coughs> is with me? <coughs> and who is betraying me? With the rest of his allies gone from the camp, Arthur only has John left, and soon they find themselves being hunted by both the Pinkertons and what's left of Dutch's gang. Still, Arthur has one final choice to make. Help John get to safety, or go back for the money. Well, if you've been paying attention, Arthur is a dead man walking, so the choice should be obvious. I'm coming with you. I'm gonna get you out of this bullshit if it's the last goddamn thing I do. Thank you. Still, what we get to see is a symbolic moment, as Arthur buys John enough time so that he can flee to safety, something that John himself would eventually have to do in the future. They don't call this series Red Dead Redemption for nothing. It would mean a lot to me. Please. There ain't no more time for talk. Go. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.